Encima. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bracing makes you fart. What's up team, and Seema the Centaur Eang here. Now, this is gonna be a follow-up video to a video that I made years ago on bracing. And the focus of this video is actually gonna be muscular bracing. Now, the reason why I wanna kind of focus on muscular bracing initially is because it's a bigger part of the process when it comes to bracing when doing a conventional sumo, squat, any type of movement, um, it's the biggest part of bracing. And I feel like a lot of people are actually forgetting about muscular bracing. Let me tell you why. Now, a lot of individuals use belts. By the way, nothing negative about using belts. They're used to increase the abdominal pressure created when doing any lift. But we kind of rely on our belts a little bit. So what a lot of individuals do when they squat, bench, or deadlift is they'll put the belt on, get it tight, they'll breathe deep into the diaphragm. So diaphragmatic breathing, remember, is breathing deep into the diaphragm. To practice this, put your hand on your chest, breathe into your diaphragm, making sure your chest isn't coming up, and come back down. So they'll breathe into the diaphragm, feel the pressure from the belt come back onto their torso and squat or deadlift or bench, feeling as if they created a lot of pressure in their abdomen. And it, it does feel that way, it feels tight. But in truth, many haven't. Now, let's talk about this a little bit. When bracing, what I mean by bracing muscularly and the best way to practice this is by sitting down. Remember in the whole bracing process that I talked about in the old video, I'll go over it a little bit here. You wanna make sure that your rib cage is right above your pelvis. You don't wanna be in extension, whereas you're, you're back or you're, you're looking up, and you don't wanna to be too deep into flexion. You want your rib cage to be in a neutral position. All right, same thing with your pelvis. You don't want anterior pelvic tilt or sticking your booty out. You want it to be in a neutral position right under you. And what sitting down is gonna allow you to do is it automatically puts your pelvis in a neutral position. It's very difficult for your pelvis to be in a bad position when sitting down. So you're gonna sit down, you're gonna get your rib cage over your pelvis, two cups pouring into each other, remember that? That was in the old video. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your thumbs and you're gonna stick them into your obliques. Okay, I want you to relax when you do this. Now. You're gonna brace, but the big deal here is that I don't want you to take any air in. Now, obviously when you're doing the squat bench and deadlift, you'll be taking air in when you brace, but to practice muscular bracing, we're not gonna take air in, and we're gonna stick our thumbs into our obliques, and we are going to try and have our obliques push against our thumbs. Now, I want you to really stick them in there. <laughs> I want you to really like stick your thumbs to your obliques and make sure that it's almost like you're trying to stab your spine, okay? And then what you're gonna do is without taking any air in, you're going to push your obliques out. That is what bracing should be, muscular bracing. This is what's done prior to taking your air in and this is what's done when you have your belt on. You're bracing your, mu your, 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 bracing your muscles. Now, I would say, I can't put an exact number on it, but I would say that this is probably 70 to 80% of the bracing process, being able to actually brace your torso. Now, I wanna, I wanna make sure you understand this. This is not just flexing my abs in this, in this clip that I'm showing. If I were just to flex my abs, my obliques wouldn't come out. This is pushing against the pressure that I'm putting into my thumbs, making sure my torso is perfectly braced, and then, I can take the air in to increase the braced, um, the braced position that I've created. And then on top of that, I'll put a belt on to make the pressure even more because now I'm bracing against resistance, which makes it stronger. That's why belts increase intra-abdominal pressure. And that's why it's so easy to use belts incorrectly. Okay? So, I know there is a lot talked about here. I also have in these few clips, I'm gonna be, uh, I have conventional deadlifts where I'm using the top-down method for bracing, which is a great way to brace. Again, the big overarching theme is making sure your rib cage is over your pelvis, making sure you muscularly brace, then you go down to the bar, drive your hips through, deadlift. But you can also brace when you're down at the bar. Still, rib cage over pelvis, hip hinge down to the bar. Remember my video that I made about hip hinge? Check it out. Then brace from that position, which you can create a great strong position in, drive your hips up, you deadlift. Same thing with the squat. You get underneath the bar, you unrack. You're already braced, rib cage over pelvis. You take a deep breath into the diaphragm, you have a strong frame now, you squat, you come out of the hole. That's how this looks, okay? So, there was a lot in this video, I know, but, the big, the big thing I want you to get from this is to practice muscular bracing. 
I don't want you to take any air and I want you to take a seat, put your thumbs into your obliques, take a deep breath, push your thumbs out. The only way that this is working is if your thumbs are protruding and understand that that is the way that bracing should feel. And then obviously take your air in into the diaphragm. I've made a video about diaphragmatic, diaphragmatic breathing on this channel, so check that out. Um, and then that, yeah, that's how you do it. Another good way so you can get the hang of this when, when lifting is maybe on your first few warm-up sets, you brace, but you don't take air in. So on your squat, maybe you do 95, 135, 185 without taking air in, just so you can make sure you're, you're muscularly braced. And then you can start taking uh, air in on your remaining sets. That's a good practical application under the bar or even when deadlifting. So I know you have a lot of questions about this and if it is confusing at all, let me know. But a lot of you are gonna benefit a lot from this drill, okay? So that's it, I'm done, I'm out of here. This isn't seem the sense our EAC from Break the Bar be an anomaly. And I think that's, yeah. Other than that, I messed up my own outro. <laughs> I will talk to all of you very, very soon. <laughs>